hi hello and welcome back to my channel welcome to today's video and my new series learning english by reading books and in today's episode we are going to be talking about haruki murakami's norwegian wood uh yes i'm aware he's a japanese author and it's a japanese book and i don't speak any japanese so obviously i've read a translation by an american translator J. Rubin. There is a translator's note at the end of the book. And so probably the title of this video should read something like Learn American English by Reading Books. But you know what? American English, British English, Australian English, those are all varieties of English. And they of course differ in pronunciation, in lexis, in idiomatic expressions. But I hope you'd agree with my statement that they are similar. Not identical, but similar, right? To say that the effect this book has had on me is a, a big one would be an understatement. It's a massive one. I mean, I've made homemade sushi like three, three times already. I've been drinking a lot of Japanese green tea. I've been doing Radio Kali's Scenics. I'll show you uh in one of the little clips <laughs> what do you mean by that and um the book has really um raised my curiosity about japan and um, the japanese culture and the japanese people you know uh, and i am glad to um share my discoveries and my findings uh by reading this book with you guys so let's dive into today's video but before we do it Let's have a bit of green tea. Right, before I sum up the storyline of this novel uh, by sharing my notes with you guys, let me give you a quick disclaimer. Um, this novel contains a couple of deaths, a couple of suicides and a lot of mental health problems. And if this topic is triggering to you, then perhaps um, you shouldn't be watching this video. But Having said that, I won't be getting into a lot of detail, right? I'll be providing merely superficial information, like what's happened to that character, or uh, I don't like giving away too much of the plot, right? So, so according to Stanzel, we have a first-person narrator. According to Jeanette, we have a homodiagetic, 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 extra diagetic narrator i don't know which of the systems you guys prefer um what it means is that uh the narrator his name is toru watanabe is also a character in the story that he's telling and he's actually the main character right and when we meet him um for the first time he's 37 years old and uh it's the year 1987 and he sits down to write about his memories uh, and specifically about the year 1969, about his first love, about uh, what happened back then, and so on and so forth. So he arrives in uh, Germany, in Hamburg. He's still on the, uh, the um, airplane, and he um, hears uh, the melody in Norwegian wood by uh, the Beatles. And it's, it instantly awakes a um, vivid memory of uh, his first love, Naoko. So he says, The melody never failed to send a shudder through me, right? Never failed, meaning every time I hear this melody, there is a shudder going through me, like, like this, <sighs> right? Like an electric, a portion of electric shock, right? something that make, makes you um, shudder, right? Um, he's talking about the fact that memory is a funny thing, he says. Uh, for example, um, he um, vividly remembers the scenery um, of the place, of the setting. Uh, he um, was spending time uh, in with Naoko and he says, scenery was the last thing on my mind, right? So the last thing I was thinking about uh, it's made a, a lasting impression on him, right? So, um, so to make an impression, to make a lasting impression, meaning it it stuck with him. To rustle branches, right? Rustle. Um, 
Russell, Russell. So first of all, we've got the silent T here, which is not pronounced, and the meaning is so specifically branches um, make this kind of noise, right? Russell. And to memorize this word, I like to um, make a mental note. We've got this brilliant actor Russell Crowe, the gladiator, right? And the same pronunciation: Russell branches, Russell Crowe. Snatches of distant barking snatches like um, bits and pieces snatches here describing a scene in in the wood he and Nalko they went for a walk and the scenery um, it says here sheer scenery uh, was actually the last thing on my mind so the last thing he was thinking about and it's made such a lasting impression on him so it stuck with him he can vividly remember the minute details of that scenery and um, so he also is describing Naoko um, her soft rounded earlobe right that part of the ear uh, the microscopic mole just beneath it right the a dark dot right a spot and she turns to me and smiles and tilts her head just a bit. So tilts her head, bends it either forward or backwards. Forwards or backwards, right? My old self. Um, this is very interesting in terms of uh, word formation, I think so, because uh, so many words have been blended together like my self, right? Uh, sometimes it's a reflex reflexive pronoun, right? Myself. Uh, I'm enjoying myself, right? Uh, but sometimes you can uh, separate those two parts and insert an adjective, my old self, meaning him back then in the year 1969. He was just his usual self, again, himself, right? So his usual self. Naoko is um, telling him uh, that there is a field well and that sometimes uh, people disappear and they fall in this hole in the earth and she is convinced that this well exists. It remains open, whether it's Naoko's imagination, which is actually quite likely because she is quite introspective and imaginative, I'd say, or is there such a well? I don't know. So Toru says, from that day forward, the image of a thing I had never laid eyes on became inseparably fused to the actual scene of the field that lay before me. I can go so far as to describe the well in minute detail. Naoko squeezed my hand really tight. You'd never fall into the well, she says to him. And as long as I, st I stick with you, I won't fall in either. Right? So she feels that he's very protective of her, that she can rely on him. Make sure you don't go off the path, right? So stay on the path. And hands thrust into the pockets of her tweed jacket. So thrust, so meaning in the, uh, hands in the pockets, right? Uh, a minimal pair of thrust is trust, isn't it? Thrust, thrust, because they differ in just one phoneme in just one sound. Every once in a while, comes up quite frequently in this novel. Every once in a while, now and then, sometimes, right? Deep within her pupils, a heavy black liquid swirled in a strange whirlpool pattern. Right? First of all, pupils have got two meanings. Pupil is a student, and pupil this. Hmm, what is it called? This uh, black dot in our eyes is the pupil. I could tell that all kinds of thoughts were whirling around in her head, right? Whirl around, spin around. Sooner or later, you'd get sick of me. Sooner or later, like a firm expression, right? So the time will come. And he says to her, but the problems they and um, they'll end eventually okay eventually in the end is not to uh, confuse with 
essentially, which I used to do. So eventually, in the end, in this novel, I've got to know a couple of insects, a couple of animals, uh, such as lizard, centipede. I've actually seen a centipede in my life, a firefly, and a dragonfly. Yuck, just thinking about it makes my flesh creep. So, an idiom, which means the same as shudder, right? They are in a pine wood. So, supposedly very healthy one, pine wood. Uh, where there are pine cones, right? Pine cones. Why do you have to be so rigid? Relax, let your guard down. You're all tensed up. So you always expect the worst. Relax your body and the rest of you will lighten up. She says in a voice drained of feeling, right? Drained of feeling, a voice in which there is no feeling. This voice alerted him. If I relax my body now, I'd fall apart. I'd go to pieces. And the pieces would be blown away. Right? So relaxed, I'd fall apart. And go to pieces right so she'd collapse so he says clutching right? clutching this faded fading imperfect memories to my breast i go on writing this book i thought it's a very interesting metaphor right so he's afraid of losing these memories that's why he's decided to sit down and write this novel the thought fills me with an almost unbearable sorrow, right? So, a sorrow that you can't bear. He says that Naoko didn't love him. Then he um, dives into this, this story. Uh, he's a freshman uh, and he lives in a dormitory. So, a freshman is uh, the first year student in college, right? And um, so he uh, makes a description about that dormitory, uh, or um, short form is the dorm, which provided meals and various facilities. Uh, so his parents couldn't afford finding him a private apartment because of uh, high tuition fees. A place in, in, in a dormitory was affordable. Upon graduation, when you graduate from college, the dorm compound sat on a large quadrangle surrounded by a concrete wall right um, so sat I thought it would be lay and not sad <laughs> uh, concrete um, we've got the same spelling but different pronunciation so concrete give me a concrete example but concrete wall it's a uh, a wall that is made of concrete so it's like a material so a two-story common building so it's got three stories right it's like i'm telling you a story and a building co consists of three stories like three levels three floors is it an american thing because as i think in british english it's it's floor first floor second floor the dom's political smell extreme right wing and it's like a warning. Oh, something is gonna happen, right? And the guys who belonged to this right wing uh, camp, they ran the place, right? Meaning they were the um, in charge of the, this place. He says there was something fishy about the place, right? Something dodgy. The head of the East Dome was in charge of the flag, and so they would raise the banner of the rising sun which is the flag of japan right he remarks the lowering of the flag at dusk was carried out with the same ceremonial reverence ceremonial reverence rings a bell emma uh, the national flag does not fly at night and she can't understand why uh, the, especially the working class people who work uh, at nights, 
they, why can't they be protected by the flag at night? He refers to the um, ritual of, uh, of the flag raising as ostentatious, so that ostentatious flag raising ritual. So show, show, showing off, hypocritical. Uh, room assignments. So when you move in, you get assigned a room, right? Freshmen and sophomores. I didn't know this word. Sophomores. So I've looked it up. Second year student in college. Right? To the left of the door stood a steel bunk bed. Bunk bed in German. Hochbett, right? Bunk. I uh, thought it's an interesting minimal pair with bank, right? Uh, so I'm trying to, to memorize it. Bank, right? This um, money institution where you can take out a loan, for example, and bonk, bed, bonk, bonk, bank. Define one sound. The stormtrooper got the upper bunk, I got the lower bunk. Built in shelves. I mean, I'm very interested in the description of. Uh, people and places, built-in shelves, Einbau, Regale. He is not very fond of this place and he says even the most well-disposed observers would have had trouble calling this setting poetic. So it's very pragmatic, right? It's got um, everything necessary to survive on a daily basis, right? I've learned a lot about Japanese food. For example, uh, they um, eat a lot of instant ramen. Uh, so I've looked it up. Japanese meat or fish soup with noodles. Ramen. Perhaps it's like a full soup in Thai. I don't know. Haven't tried it yet, if I'm honest. The walls bore pin-ups from girly magazines. Pin-ups. Um, so you can pin something up that it's up on the wall, right, and they, they have it. Um, so you pin something up, the phrasal verb uh, gets converted into noun, pin ups. And please do me a favor and do yourselves a favor and look up this word, pin up. It's a uh, photo of. So he also says that the place is very dirty and filthy and moldy. I like this pattern, so I've got chill, chilly, smell, smelly. Orange skins clung to the bottoms of waste baskets. I really do think it's American English because I think in British English it's more like rubbish bin, isn't it? So cling to, clung to. On a regular basis, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis. In retrospect, it seems amazing that those shit piles gave rise to no killer epidemics. Right? So I just like this construction to give rise to something, meaning to cause something, to lead to something, right? Give rise to something. Odors beyond redemption. I think the language that is used here is very funny. Uh, it's too bad to be improved or saved by anyone. Oh, just beyond redemption. So the inhabitants, the tenants of the dormitory, supposedly very rarely are uh, uh, showered. My room was as sanitary as a morgue. A morgue is a place where dead bodies are kept before the funeral, right? And it's something to do with his um, very tidy roommate, who has a nickname Stormtrooper. And he uh, has supposedly uh, an OCD, so obsessive compulsive disorder, because, like, based on the description of his habits, for example, it says floor and window was spotless, the mattresses were aired each week. He keeps their room in order, right? And perhaps a bit too much. Toro says he left me alone as long as I kept my area clean. Right? As long as it was like um, the condition, uh, under this condition, right? He didn't bother him. He did all the cleaning, 
also like this construction in English, he did all the ironing, he did all the hoovering, he did all the washing, he did all the talking, he did all the plus the verb plus in. The one thing that bothered me was the way he'd spray clouds of insecticide if he noticed a bug in the room because then I had to take refuge in a different room or something. As you can see, um, sometimes um, the novel is funny or funnily described and whenever he is telling people about Stormtrooper and his habits, people can't help but laugh because, yeah, it's somehow funny. It's a, it's a chemical to fight insects, right? Because a bog is a little insect, right? Uh, for example, there are some bogs that uh, live in people's beds. The construction to take refuge. Normally, uh, people take refuge in, in a different country or seek refuge because of uh, the war, right? The stormtrooper was measuring in geography, right? Um, so, to major in something, meaning you're studying this subject as a major uh, this is your main focus and then you've got a minor right uh, so like a, a different area of interest that you're studying but that doesn't take up as much of your time as your major subject right so his major subject was geography he started stuttered um, very similar, uh, similar verb in German, stottern, right? Stuttered. Um, have you seen uh, the king's speech with um, Colin Firth? This is exactly the problem the king was uh, having, right? This stutter that he had to overcome. Stormtrooper asks Toru, "What are you going to major in?" And he says, "Drama." So he um, Toru studies literature especially I think American literature interest interests him <clears throat> yeah. by the way his favorite novel is The Great Gatsby um, and the history of drama and this is exactly the course where he then gets to know Midori a no, not unimportant character in this novel lecture handouts very nicely constructed noun so you hand out something you hand out lecture materials and they, you have it a handout like a uh, piece of paper with um, the structure of the lecture or with the most essential information of the course or the syllabus right, right so it's handouts to hand out to the course participants one of the um, findings, uh, culturally speaking, is the radio calisthenics program. It's like uh, Japan's best known exercise program. Uh, it's like a three minute um, exercise routine that every Japanese person, or nearly, uh, grows up with and knows by heart. And so, I'll show you um, a funny video um, for a change. <laughs> enjoyed it uh, because it was like um, because the stormtrooper he's been doing this exercise routine for many years now and obviously um, living in the dormitory uh, is not an obstacle right 
Archie not doing this exercise routine and he uh, starts um, at 6.30, uh, the time uh, when Toru Watanabe is sound asleep. And um, I was like, hmm, what is this? Um, so, so he would shuffle around the room, shuffle around, right? So from get around the room. When the jumping part came, I was like, what jumping part? And um, in this exercise routine, you do some jumps towards the end of this um, series of exercises. Toru asks him to cut out, right? Cut out this um, um, part. And uh, the stormtrooper says, I can't leave anything out. I've been doing the same thing every day for 10 years. And once I start, I do the whole routine unconsciously. Right? So on autopilot, or, or um, almost um, mechanically, he would wake Toru up and he was sitting on the edge, on the edge of the bed, right? On the edge of the bed. I wanted to finish making my point. I mean, you might have noticed that I'm also interested in the present participle constructions, right? And so we had um, come plus present participle, right? Came running and also sat musing and finished making. It's one of those um, uh, verbs that demand the present participle um, of the verb that follows it. And also a nice construction, the quickest way to put a stop to this was you put a stop to something or you stop it. Another way of saying it would be let's put an end to this, right? You put a stop to something, you put an end to something. Also, people drink a lot of alcohol in this novel and the phrase she took a sip, I was sipping my beer, she was, was sipping her wine, frequently comes up in this novel, I'd say. Uh, so to take a sip, right? One sip at a time. Plump cheeks, plump cheeks. So um, indicating health. Naoko had suggested that we leave the train. I wasn't sure why Naoko had suggested we get off the train. Um, this construction, which the group suggests, comes up frequently and what caught my eye is that the verb that follows the uh, personal pronoun is not conjugated it's in the basis form the infinitive so she suggested that we leave um, I wasn't sure why Naoko had suggested we get off somehow it doesn't sound right but I've been collecting those instances, right? And the verb uh, is unchanged, like the infinitive form. It had been a nice afternoon in May. After lunch, Kizuki suggested we cut classes and go play pool or something. I could have closed the distance between us, but something held me back. So to, to hold somebody back um, something held me back, stopped me from doing it. Everybody thinks I'm this delicate little girl, but you can't tell the book by its cover. I, I love this expression. Uh, you shouldn't be judging a book by its cover, right? Appearances can be deceiving. She is struggling to express herself clearly, and it's not only her in this novel. I think at one point Midori also complains that she can't put her emotions or feelings into words but first and foremost I think it's Naoko so he, her inability to express herself clearly I lose track of what I was trying to say right lose track you keep track of something or you lose track of something so she forgets right she led a spare simple life with hardly any friends and her um, the room was small and neat and back then in high school she had dressed with a real flair and surrounded herself with a million friends interesting isn't it so in high school she was very social or a social person and now in college in tokyo she's very isolated 
and lonely. So this could have something to do with the fact that her boyfriend, Kizuki, committed suicide when he was 17 and she can't get over it. It's had a like, big effect on her mental health, but not only, because we also learn at some point in the novel that her older sister also took her own life. And of course, um, it's also in, impacted Toru because Kizuki was his like only or the best friend. Nagasawa is a great talker. Uh, he compares him to Kizuki, who also um, used to be a great talker. But Nagasawa is like person number one who can talk. Uh, and uh, Toru thinks he is more um, uh, of a listener not a great talker. His conversational gift, so he's a chatterbox. And he um, is a diplomacy student, a diplomatic student, who upon graduation goes uh, to work for the foreign ministry uh, in Japan and we then learn that he is um, sent to Germany uh, to do his is it one year training, two year training? I think it's one year. Despite his affluent background, despite his wealthy background, uh, it's about Nagasawa. Uh, Naoko turns 20 and she says, I'm just not ready. It feels weird. Like somebody's pushing me from behind with no end in sight. So she's seven months older than Toro. And he actually is apprehensive of his 20th birthday approaching. I don't know, I don't know why. He sort of, he doesn't want to grow up. But then, at the end of the novel, we know that he embraces being an adult. He um, loves being an adult. He loves taking responsibility and like being an agent, um, right? Being in charge of his life. Whether she was awake or asleep, like interesting uh, adverbs. On the wall above her desk hung, a kind of hang, hung, hung a calendar. I'd like to have a good long talk with you once you've calmed down. She's had an emotional breakdown, a nervous breakdown, and she uh, started crying and she couldn't uh, stop crying. Uh, this, so this construction was once and then the present perfect once you've come down once you've come down right um, as soon as and after Naoko's 20th birthday she leaves college and goes to actually like a, a sanatorium a mental institution to take care of her nerves and she never comes back her mom died a couple of years ago she had a brain tumour and her father, we then find out, has a brain tumour as well and he's in the hospital and she uh, lied to Toru. He, she said he had emigrated to Uruguay, which isn't true. He is actually dying in the hospital and um, because he's terminal, he's, he's got a terminal illness. She says, lift of the shutter like the metal shutter, right? Uh, which is a wonderful meaningful pair with shatter, right? So sh to shut something, right? So this metal shutter, you lift it and open uh, the shop. And shatter is like uh, destroy. And sometimes people say, I am shattered, meaning I'm destroyed. I'll be leaving on Wednesday. So this construction quite often comes up in the novel, I'll be leaving, we won't be seeing each other, uh, I won't be staying, right? So, so the present progressive, right, in the future, meaning it's scheduled, it's 100% sure. So Toru is learning irregular German verb forms, um, like fahren, like ich fahre, Ich fuhr, ich bin gefahren. And 
um, he's having an interesting conversation with Midori about the subjunctive case in English. And I mean, I've had a couple of instances already, like, I bet you wish you were the past subjunctive English. I'm about to put a stop to today's video, <laughs> because uh, otherwise it'll uh, get too long. Uh, obviously, I um, haven't shared all of my discoveries with you and if you don't follow me on Instagram perhaps you should because I think what I might do is to share more instances instances of uh, uh, linguistically interesting examples on Instagram like uh, on my feed right and yeah bye guys I hope this video has been helpful for you um, I will keep reading books and sharing with you my findings uh, but for now I wish you all well Всем пока. Чуть с Бай, guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.